the new Transformers movie Rise of the Beasts has finally arrived, bringing in details from Beast Wars, new Transformers factions, and an unexpected crossover. These are all the Easter eggs you may have missed. Let them come. Although Optimus Primal is defined as the leader of the Maximals, that wasn't always the case. In the film's opening, we see that there is a leader named Apelink who attempts to keep Scourge distracted while Primal and others escape. This ultimately causes him to die at Scourge's hand, but he's able to pass the reins to Primal before they leave. Even though Primal might not have been ready to fill Apelink's shoes, we eventually watch him become a great leader who has grown to love humanity and carries on the duties of protecting the Transwarp Key. Aside from the opening giving Apelink a different origin, it ties to Primal's personal arc as a leader. In his original incarnation, Primal was described as a young and inexperienced captain who took on leadership duties that made some question his readiness. Over time, he becomes the knowledgeable and caring leader that impresses Optimus Prime and plays a pivotal role in battle. It's great that the film gives more credence to Primal's start as a young leader, creating a real origin story that fans will appreciate seeing. Plus, the film also touches on how Primal's Optimus title is inspired by Optimus Prime, just like it is in his animated origins. Rise of the Beasts isn't the first time that fans have seen R.C. on the big screen. She made her live-action debut back in Revenge of the Fallen and had a brief cameo in Bumblebee during the opening war sequence on Cybertron. However, her appearances have been incredibly brief and, in the case of Revenge of the Fallen, have largely failed to capture the character's iconic look. It's fair to say that one of Transformers' most iconic female Autobots hasn't exactly been treated with the respect she deserves. Rise of the Beasts changes that by not only giving her more screen time, but also restoring the character to a more classic look. R.C.'s redesign in Rise of the Beasts is heavily inspired by her look in the 2007 animated series Transformers Animated. Although she trades out bright pink for a reddish shade, she has a sleek aesthetic that makes her a terror in battle. Her look back in Revenge of the Fallen was just plain atrocious, so it's nice that Rise of the Beasts pays tribute to the character's legacy by restoring her to her superior form. It's established early on that Scourge has quite a history as a deadly bounty hunter and loves to take trophies. As shown when Scourge kills Apelink, he loves to rip off the emblem of his victims and attach them to himself. Various symbols can be seen on his shoulder as well as behind the grill on the front of his truck incarnation. While this is a great nod to Scourge's original history as the leader of a bounty hunter group known as the Sweeps, it's also full of fun Easter eggs. Along with symbols representing the Autobots, Decepticons, and Maximals, there are emblems that tie to the Autobot elite guard and mercenaries. However, there's one emblem that'll be much more familiar to fans. Eagle-eyed diehards will notice that a couple of emblems are connected to the Wreckers, who were last seen in Transformers Dark of the Moon. It's a pretty interesting nod to a fan-favorite faction and an Easter egg that makes you wonder if the Wreckers will rise again. For those who don't remember, there was a prequel to Rise of the Beasts that focused on Bumblebee, where he teamed up with a human protagonist named Charlie. The film set up the Autobots being stranded on Earth while war continued on Cybertron. Although Rise of the Beasts isn't technically a direct sequel, it still takes time to acknowledge the events of the previous film. When Optimus shows some frustration at having to work with Noah, Bumblebee openly disagrees with his view. Optimus then acknowledges that he understands that Bumblebee has worked with humans before, but that it doesn't change how he feels. It's a moment that directly references how Bumblebee worked with Charlie to protect Earth. As Bumblebee learned in his titular solo film, Optimus follows suit in his understanding of how important humanity can be in Rise of the Beasts, eventually developing a real connection that makes him a protector of Earth. Given that Bumblebee doesn't directly tie into what's happening in Rise of the Beasts, the latter film didn't need to reference it for audiences to follow the thread of the plot. But thankfully, it does, and Bumblebee fans can feel acknowledged. Thank you. With Rise of the Beasts bringing the franchise back to the mid-90s, it's no surprise there are plenty of nostalgic nods to 90s pop culture. A lot of the film's comic book and video game references come from Noah's brother Chris. When we first see Chris, he's sporting a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers shirt, a show that first premiered in 1993. Throughout the film, Chris makes references to different video games, including Super Mario Bros., when he's talking about being unable to defeat Bowser, and Sonic the Hedgehog when he wants to use Sonic and Knuckles as codenames over the radio. As for music, the film is absolutely littered with different songs from the 90s. Two of the most notable instances are when Elena sings TLC's Waterfalls to calm herself down, and Bumblebee makes a grand entrance to the final battle with LL Cool J's 1990 classic Mama Said Knock You Out. Mirage even brings up how Mark Wahlberg was in the process of transitioning from musician to actor, which is even funnier when you realize that Wahlberg is an alum of this franchise, having starred in Transformers Age of Extinction and The Last Night. Something's coming. You can't shoot your way out of it. 
No fan could ever forget the iconic Transformers theme that dubs the titular beings as robots in disguise and tells fans that they're more than meets the eye. Well, the latter phrase actually gets a mention in Rise of the Beasts and is given an interesting new meaning. When talking to Optimus about the Peruvian tribe that has helped the Maximals during their time on Earth, Primal explains how these people have given him a new perspective on life and their role as protectors. While Optimus thinks of humans as weak and a nuisance in his plans to return home, Primal tells him that he shouldn't doubt them and that they're truly more than meets the eye. With this pronouncement, Primal treats fans to a new spin on the classic theme song line, and it actually causes Optimus's mindset to change as well. From here, he starts to see his purpose on Earth as something greater, and it's what ultimately makes him a better leader. Unlike most Transformers, Mirage has a lot of powers at his disposal. He has the ability to create holograms of himself to distract enemies, and can even give Noah his armor to form an exosuit that helps him fight in battle. However, one of Mirage's more underrated capabilities is that he can transform into multiple types of vehicles, from a sleek Porsche that can speed through the streets to a garbage truck that can help in stealth missions. Mirage is basically a Swiss army knife. One vehicle he transforms into is a nod to his original incarnation. While showing Noah the different cars he can transform into, Mirage turns into a small indie car, which is what he has historically been most identified with in the multiple different Transformers incarnations. It's a shame that we don't get to see Mirage's indie car in action but it's still a nice callback, nevertheless. It's pretty surprising that by this point Bumblebee's voice still isn't fixed and he's the only Transformer who can't speak. However, Bumblebee being forced to use his radio frequencies to communicate has become such a memorable part of the character that fans certainly aren't complaining. This time around, his lines come from a very specific medium. As mentioned by Optimus, Bumblebee has been spending a lot of time at the drive-in, so it's not shocking that a lot of his lines are from movies he's been watching lately. There are two key instances of Bumblebee using movies that stand out the most, one heartbreaking and one heroic. The heartbreaking moment comes when Bumblebee sacrifices himself to save Optimus, and he spouts the Oh Captain My Captain line from Dead Poet Society. Oh Captain My Captain, sit down, Mr. Anderson. The other comes with his triumphant return in the final battle, where he puts his own spin on Roddy Piper's famous line from John Carpenter's They Live. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. It's good to know that Bumblebee loves movies just as much as we do, and frankly, he's got good taste. While Mirage might have sacrificed himself to save Noah in the film's climactic battle, a mid credit scene shows Noah trying to bring back his friend, which leads to a pretty rad Easter egg. With the help of Reek, Noah is seen putting Mirage back together in his car form using scraps that Reek brings him. Although Reek is doubtful of Noah's plans, Mirage eventually springs back to life and sports a new color scheme thanks to all the rust on the scrap pieces. Many may not realize it, but this version of Mirage is actually a nod to another Transformers faction known as the Junkians. The Junkians are a race in Transformers lore who reside on the planet of junk and have a brown-colored aesthetic that's very similar to how Mirage looks after his reassembly. So, Mirage's resurrection comes with a great little easter egg for fans that touches on a faction of junk robots who could and should make an appearance in a future film. One of the biggest surprises of Rise of the Beasts was undoubtedly the reveal in the film's final moments. As Noah continues to look for security work following his adventure with the Autobots, he comes across a man named Agent Burke, who cryptically indicates that he knows everything that's been going on. He knows all about Noah's time with the Autobots and wants him to join his secret team. In this scene, it's tough to figure out who Burke is or what organization he works for. Then, as Noah looks into the secret lab behind the wall and flips over the card, we get the surprising reveal that Burke is part of G.I. Joe. Now, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility for these two franchises to have an epic crossover, especially since it's happened before. G.I. Joe and Transformers have crossed paths multiple times in the comics, and they're both toy brands under Hasbro. Plus, Paramount has produced films for both franchises. The G.I. Joe films haven't found the same success that Transformers has at the box office, so maybe Paramount thinks a crossover could benefit both franchises. Regardless, it's still an epic Easter egg that teases a potentially amazing mashup.